In this episode, we'll take a look at the Saramonic V-Mic, which is a Colt shoe mount shotgun microphone. Now, in full disclosure, Saramonic sent me this microphone to review, and I did not pay for it with my own money. Also, this entire episode is recorded with the Saramonic V-Mic, and it's recorded into a Panasonic GH4. I have not applied any processing to the audio from the camera or from the recorder, except to normalize it to minus 23 LUFS, which is the European broadcast standard for perceived loudness. I have applied no compression, no EQ, no noise reduction, no anything else. So this is pretty much what you can expect straight out of the camera or recorder. Now, there are a few things that are unique about this microphone. First of all, it is a camera top microphone. It is made for mounting in the cold shoe of your camera, which means you mount it on top of your camera. That means it may be a little bit farther away from your talent, which can be okay, depending on what you're doing. However, if you're recording dialogue, sometimes you want to get the mic a little bit closer. So, for example, in this particular case, I actually boomed the mic right above me, right here, to get it a little bit closer, and that will help the signal-to-noise ratio. That is to say, it'll just sound better. You'll get more dialogue and less ambient noise. Now, to do that, I'm using a Rode VC1 extension cable that runs from the microphone into my Panasonic GH4. Now, the cold shoe and the nut that retain it in the cold shoe are both plastic. However, the quarter 20 tap on the bottom is metal. The rest of the body of the microphone is metal, so it's very sturdy, but at the same time, it's not terribly heavy. In terms of weight, it comes in at 196 grams, which is less than half a pound. It's also about 25 centimeters long. It comes with a coiled 3.5 millimeter TRS cable, which is designed to connect to your camera or to your audio recorder. And of course, it also comes with a foam wind cover, which is really kind of meant to keep in place. Now, it also has a shock mount, which is very similar to the Rycote Lyre system. It's a sort of a composite plastic type of material, and it allows the microphone to be isolated from the movements of the cold shoe mount. So it's not perfect. If you are moving around a whole lot, you will still need to be very careful, but it does do a pretty good job isolating the mic from the camera. So it does eliminate a lot of that low frequency noise that you pick up when your camera moves around a lot. In terms of controls on the back, it has a gain control. Your options are minus 10 dB, zero, and plus 20 dB. In this case, I'm recording with the Panasonic GH4 with the setting at zero dB, and we seem to be getting plenty of signal. It also has a high pass filter, which is very good if you need to cut out hum from an air conditioner or perhaps when you're moving the mic around a little bit. It also has a high frequency boost, which is useful if for some reason you want sort of a crisper sound, but potentially more sibilance at the same time. So you have to be careful with that, but it's easy enough to leave that off. It's also very good for dark voices, if you will, people that have very, very deep voices. In terms of power, it works with two AA batteries. And so far in terms of battery life, I have over 12 hours clocked on this set of Eneloop Pro batteries and it still seems to be going great. So we'll have to get back with you and let you know how long the batteries last in the end. Now to sort of illustrate how this works relative to most camera microphones themselves and how it works when you have the microphone mounted on top of the camera and how it sounds when you have the microphone boomed above, this is an example of what the camera mic sounds like. Now in this case, as I said, this is a Panasonic GH4. So um, not an uncommon camera and this is pretty typical for camera microphones. Now this is what it sounds like when you have the microphone mounted on top of the camera. So mounted on top of the camera with the little coiled cable running directly, again into the Panasonic GH4. Now this is a demonstration of what the microphone sounds like when I'm booming it just above me right here within about 40 to 60 centimeters of the front of my face. Now, cameras tend to have noisier microphone inputs, but I found with my Panasonic GH4, the Saramonic still managed to keep the noise floor at minus 64 dB after normalizing the audio to minus 23 LUFS. And just for the record, that was with the camera's mic input set to minus 6 dB. Again, great. So there is an overview of the Saramonic V-Mic. Seems like a great little mic, especially if you, at its price point, again, $119 US. We'll go ahead and put links down below once it is released. And I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.